one, and welcome to our live stream. Welcome back. It feels amazing doing these again. Um, we love doing our live streams, and we regularly do live streams, uh, well, at least we used to do regular live streams, uh, before the pandemic together. And so, yeah, today is the first live stream we've done in a long time, but Naomi's back, and we're going to hopefully make these a regular thing if you're interested. So, Naomi, you wanted to speak. Yeah, well, no, I don't know. I had anything sensible to say. This is, <laughs> I was, I, when I was rambling on my own earlier, I was saying I needed to tap into the sensible layer of my mm -hmm. thought processes. We'll see if that happens or not. Um, but are we going to introduce ourselves? Uh, shall we introduce the live stream first and then we'll introduce ourselves so people know what we're talking about? Yes, although so, I would like to point out that on our plan, that's exactly the opposite of what it says. Well, I changed my mind earlier when I was practicing. So um, this live stream today is all about reflection and thinking about time in the past and how you can do better and what better time to think about how you can improve yourself than the start of a semester so for anyone who is who's done semester one and is now going towards semester two hello this is an amazing time to start and reflect but if you're new to university which i know many of you are it is also still a good time to reflect and everything we say is still relevant to you but instead focus on reflecting on week by week rather than semester to semester uh, we actually do recommend more regular reflection than just one big go in uh, per semester. But now we can talk about reflection later, can't you? So we're going to be talking about reflection, as we just mentioned. Uh, we're going to be discussing using feedback, both feedback you give to yourself and feedback you get from your lecturers. And then we'll be discussing goal setting and ways you can improve some key areas using our develop at Derby resources. And we'll be showcasing that towards the end. And we've only, we've not had those since we've done the last live stream. So yeah, I'm very excited. Um, before we introduce ourselves, I do want to mention there is a chat today. So if you want to chat, say hello. Feel free to say hello throughout the session. Uh, we will be answering questions at the end. And we do always have an eye on the chat. So if you do want to ask any questions, do let us know. Yes. We decided we weren't going to type replies um, in the chat because there is only the two of us here and um, you'll hear the clankety clanking of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, but we will. We are looking at the chat so we can verbally respond to any questions. So when you mention we, Naomi, who are we? Ah, that was smooth, Alex. That was I've done smooth. lots of podcasts since we last did these in person. I've, I've been training. So who are we, Naomi? Who are we? Well, shall I say who I am? Yes. Because I feel like that's my area of expertise and Go then you it. can say who you are. So I'm Naomi. Um, I work in the skills team. Um, in the library, we do lots of work on developer at Derby, which we're going to talk about later. My particular interest, well, I was just saying about my large interest in time management, um, reflection is one thing I feel really very strongly about, very passionately about that. So this is a good live stream for me to kick off with. Mm, I, I agree with that. Reflection is a definite major skill to be developing as a student. And I think it's a pathway to developing all those skills. So stay tuned for Naomi's interesting discussion on that later. Uh, I'm Alex. I um, work in the skills team alongside Naomi. Naomi is my manager, and so her main responsibility today is if I talk for too long, to wheel me away or to shove me under the desk so that I can stop. Yes, if you were to look back on some of our old live streams, I did get into a slight habit of just pushing Alex out of shot on his wheelchair, but we're set up now. He's actually quite blocked in. There's a desk. Those so I feel like it would be a health and safety hazard if I tried to wheel you off. So, um, as alongside working at the university, which I've done now for the past three and a half years, I have studied at the university, I studied undergraduate in law and then a master's in legal practice. And I've now graduated from both of those. So I've been able to use feedback and the ability to reflect to push me through uh, my studies and to do better as we went on. You don't, I don't expect everything to go perfectly for everyone at the start of their university journey. Uh, when I started my master's, my first assessment was 55%, but I reflected and I got better and better through that. So you're not expected to get things right but you are expected to reflect and do better over time. And that's what I love. So that's my interest as well as Naomi's is yes. reflection. I also have been a student in the past, but I am just a bit of a, a bit of a chunk of time older than Alex. And it was just that little bit longer ago that I studied. It feels like yesterday, yes. but it was a bit longer ago. But I have studied in the past. I have studied. I just want to move. We've got one minute till we need to move on to the next section. I just want to muse on a difference with Zooming and um, onlining these live streams, which is where I look because when we were... When we were doing it online, I could look at you, Alex, and also my camera at the same time, but now I feel like I'm doing this. But over time, I've had the ability to reflect on that and see the new differences between the two. So, Naomi, why is reflection such an important thing uh, for students to uh, learn about and do? So, 
Sorry, that's made me laugh. I really don't think we should do such for that is the reflection. I don't think we should do such forced um segues. Uh, I just needed to move us on, so Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so reflection. Like I said, this is a skill that both Alex and I feel really, really strongly about. And the f- main point that I want to make um, initially is that this is not a big, scary thing. It's not anything hugely different to what you are probably doing in your day-to-day life anyway. So I am um, I'm going to just give a brief, very, very str- simple reflective model. And then I'm going to talk about um, something that happened to me uh, last week. I think it was last week. And then I'm going to talk about how I might reflect on that how I did reflect on that. So very, very straightforwardly, there's lots of reflective models um, out there that you can use, but they generally all have three stages. There is a descriptive stage where you describe what's happening. There is a critical thinking stage where you ask yourself some critical questions about that experience. And there is a future focus stage where you make a plan. What are you going to do next? And that's it. That's reflection, basically. So the other day I got into work and I opened, I parked my car, I opened the boot of my car and there was no bag. My bag, which I had diligently packed at home with all my stuff and it was not in the boot of my car. I was incredibly frustrated by this. Um, I was running through in my head what was in that bag. There was my work keys, there was my ID card, um, and then there was my food, there was my breakfast and my lunch. So then I was angry with myself. I was also hungry. I was the definition of hangry um, (laughs) as I came into work. I had to go in through the front rather than in through the normal door I came through because I had to sign in, which is always very embarrassing to go to the front desk and say, I have forgotten my card, I'm very sorry. Sign in, you get like a bright red lanyard. They're so very nice every, though. They're, oh, very nice, yes. But you have to wear the lanyard of shame um, <laughs> and come in. Everybody knows you've forgotten your card. Um, and I wanted to go back home. I wanted to get... No, first I thought I could buy some food. But then I realised my phone and my purse were also in my bag, which was at home. So I didn't have any way of buying any food. So um, I wanted to go home straight away, but I thought to myself, actually, traffic's really bad at the moment. It's going to take me ages. I'm going to wait for an hour and then I'm going to go home and get it. So an hour later, I drove home, grabbed my bag, came back into work, ate my breakfast. The world was a happier place Mm -hmm. for me after I'd eaten my breakfast. That's the experience that happened to me. That might be how I might tell someone about it at the end of my day. You'll never guess what happened to me today. And then I might say all that. Now, because this is recorded, actually, people could go back and listen to it again. But you can pick out of that description those three elements that I just um, that I just identified. So the descriptive stage, I described what happened. I left my bag at home. It had my keys in it. It had my lanyard in it. Um, it caused you to wear the lanyard of shame. I had to wear the lanyard of shame. It had my food in it. Um, We've got some critical thinking going there. How did that make me feel? I was angry. I was hungry. I don't know whether hungry comes under critical thinking, if that's descriptive or not, but certainly my emotions. It was a consequence. I was, um, yes, I was... um, I, I was I was angry, I was annoyed with myself. That's a critical question. How did it make me feel? Um, the thought process I then went to, how in that moment was I going to solve this problem? Was I going to drive home right now? But what would the traffic be like? What um, influences are there going to be on that journey? That's all critical thinking. Um, and yeah, those consequences of forgetting my bag. Could I cope for the day without the bag, I decided no. Even though I'd got into the office by that point, I could cope without the work stuff, I decided, but I could not cope without my food. Um, So those were all critical questions I asked myself. Future focused, I then did make um, a plan for how I was going to avoid doing that again. So now, when I leave in the mornings, I have to put three children in the car together with all their stuff. There's a lot of stuff Mm. going in the car. There's book bags, water bottles, coats, nursery bags, all sorts going on. So now I make sure that I put my bag with the book bags and I have a rule that I'm not allowed to put the book bags in the car unless I've got my bag in my hand as well. That's my new rule. Hmm. So that was my future focused planning from that. It's an interesting story because these are the types of events where it's very easy to stick to the descriptive phase and say this is what happened to me and then move on. Whereas what you've done there is you've thought about what happened to you both in the moment and now clearly afterwards and then you analysed it, and you've used that analysis to start picking out why did things happen these ways, and then 
thinking about those whys, what could you then do? Yes, now I did. But also, I didn't do any of that consciously. No. So at the time, I wasn't thinking I'd use this as an example. At the time, my thought process literally went, I'm angry, I'm hungry, I don't want this to happen again, I'm going to make sure that I always pack my bag in the boot of my car, so I'm going to put it with the book bags. Mm. So I did all that reflective thinking, but not necessarily consciously. But we can pick apart and we can pick out the different elements of reflection. So if you were doing reflective writing and a, re a reflective assignment for your studies, that might be the kind of things that you might do. You could start off by just talking it through, talk out your experiences either to someone else or to a dictaphone or write it all down and then go through and pick out those different elements. Actually, this is where I'm thinking critically. This is where I'm making a plan for the future. Another thing, um, and this we'll come back to this in goal setting, um, another thing to add an, an addendum to my story is that since then I have not forgotten my bag again. I have brought my bag to work with me every day since then. However, today I did forget the girls' water bottles. So what are you going to do about that? You're going to analyse what happened, the consequences of it, and then think about what you're going to do in the future. Yeah, so this is a reflective cycle essentially, reflective action planning, we've got lots of information about that which um, we'll look at later mm. um, on Develop at Derby. So mm. reflection, like I say, it's something that generally we're doing, we're doing, we're learning from our experiences. Um, the more consciously we can do it, the better. So I did start actually putting this experience down into a more structured reflective format. I looked at some of my own resources that I created um, for our guide and I started working through those and I suggest in those resources that you think about the questions who, what, where, when, how, how? who, what, where, when, how and why. Um, and actually doing that made me bring out more detail. So the who, for example, I thought, well, the who is me. But then I thought, actually, there were other people involved. Um, I spoke to my line manager and I said, I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to go home. Do you mind if I make the time back? Um, so actually, she was quite an important figure in this experience and how that worked out and the consequences of, because she is lovely. And she said, yes, you do that and um, work the time out as you need. So that was good. But actually, if she hadn't have responded like that, it would have been a different experience. So going through the materials that we've got, going through those reflective questions actually made me um, get more detail about the situation. Mm. So, And I'll be showing you where you can get those reflective questions from towards uh, the, end of the, the end of this live stream, not workshop. So um, I think the important thing to add in Naomi's story there and we're saying in applying it to everyone's story as a student is that when you um, are a student, you aren't always going to get everything right to start with. And so if something goes wrong, let's say you've had your first semester and you didn't always get the results you wanted, you should then go through and figure out why it happened. You should, what happened. You should reflect on it, think about what, what happened, why, why it happened, and then think about what actions you can do. And those actions will help you get towards a better stage uh, of a result, or get better results going forwards. It may not be perfect straight away. You may remember to pack your bag, but forget the girls' water bottles. But then you can think, hey, okay, what do I need to do different about my process now to get the girls' water bottles every time, and the bag, and the car keys, and everything else I need? Another key point um, is that your reflection might be on an overwhelmingly positive experience and actually what you pull out of your reflection is these are the really good things that I want to do again. Yeah. So it doesn't even need to be anything negative. Yeah. Um, you can, you could make a conscious decision just to focus on the positives. So even if there were negative things, if that's not where your head's at right then, just make a conscious decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on these are the things that went really well. Mm -hmm. And how can I reflect on those? How can I um, use those in future situations? How can I adapt that skill or the, that, that technique that I used to have that positive effect in another situation again? Oh no, Alex is drinking now. I'm under pressure to carry on talking. Uh, I was just drinking. So ready to start talking about the next section. Oh, okay, yes. So reflection is something you should be doing and trying to make yourself, um, put yourself through that ex those activities and those exercises. But what better should reflect on at the end of a semester than the feedback you received during your semester? So I think that's really the starting point for your reflection, is to have a look at the feedback given to you by lecturers on your grades. Have a look at the feedback given to you uh, that you've had from others and peers and ask people for feedback potentially. Um, so let's say you've had a result back and you might not have got what you wanted. Try and have a look at that result and figure out why that was the case. So the starting point, like I say, have a look at the feedback given to you, and if you don't understand it, potentially ask the lecturer if you could meet with them, or have a look with it. Have a look through it with your personal academic tutor. You can or a dictionary. 
or I mean, I mean, I don't mean that. Um, that sounded a bit. I can't think of the word. Facetious. Facetious. But no, I meant it genuinely. And um, there's lots of resources we've got in the library that will help explain academic terms that you might want to clarify. So if you are told, for example, to be more critical, you might want to look at what critical yeah. means in that scenario, that kind of thing. Yeah. And you might want to have a look at some of our guides, but we'll explore what you can do about some of that feedback uh, later on. Uh, and it, so you've got the feedback uh, that's been given to you and that's a really good starting point because you can start to pick out some key things so for example you may be told that you're not being critical enough okay figure out what critical means then create a plan so try and think about okay why wasn't I critical what did I do to be critical and then think about okay how can I then be more critical in the future what actions am I going to take now to do that the truth is though is by just looking at your feedback that's been given to you that will not cover every single thing that you need to cover. The truth is, lecturers will only see, when they mark your grade, the work you've done. And with anonymous marking, they may not even know who has produced that grade, who has produced the work that they're marking. So they don't know, with your work, how you time managed, as we were discussing earlier. They don't know how you motivated yourself. They may be able to tell when, when it was submitted, but they don't know why it was submitted that time or whatever. So they don't have many of the details. Only you know exactly how your performance throughout your assessment went. So it's our advice that as well as looking at the feedback given to you, you give yourself some feedback as well. So one way for doing that, that I do this is that I put in regular, um, I write regular diaries every day and I write them and then at the end of a project I might read through them again. Um, I also uh, would recommend doing regular effective exercises. If you're at the end of the assessment and you haven't done any of that, don't worry. Think about how you time managed and start making some notes on it. And then analysing those notes and thinking, okay, do I need to do better? Was the, were the problems caused by this time management? What different solutions can I think of? If you don't know solutions, well, maybe attend Naomi's time management workshop next week. Um, is it next week? It is next week. It is next week. Next Tuesday, I believe. There, there you go. So start thinking about what actions you can do in analysing. This is something that you can do regularly you don't have to wait till you've got feedback from your lecture and actually it's our advice that you start reflecting on a more regular basis so that you can spot any potential errors before the lecturer pulls, the, pulls you up on them you can check your own work to see have i been critical before your lecturer goes you've not been critical so at least you can try to be critical then and then if your lecturer says you're still not critical you can be like okay i thought i was being critical but i'm not so what what's the difference what's gone wrong here and then you've got some proper date there are things to analyse and go forwards on. So feedback from lecturers is a very important starting point. But after that, you should then reflect on your own performance using those reflective models that we discussed. And I will be showing you where you can find information further about those towards the end. So it is worth giving yourself those reflective exercises, thinking about how you can bring reflection to, into your schedule to give yourself that feedback as early as possible. So, Naomi, do you have anything you wanted to add at all about feedback, or are we good on this topic, or any questions you wanted to ask me? I think in terms of feedback, I would say whenever you're getting feedback from someone else, so whoever that is, whether it's yourself, or, or your lecturer, or a group member, or someone else on your course, or a friend, anything like that, um, you want to be thinking about the same sorts of things you might think when you're considering, say, a journal article or your information literacy. Who is this person? Who is this? How authoritative are they in this subject? So <laughs> I do think feedback is good. I think it's important to listen to what people say. But don't take everything absolutely at face value yeah. without, again, thinking critically about it. Yeah. So your lecturer probably is an authority in your academic work. So if they're saying this piece of work that I have marked um, needed improvement here, here and here, that's they've probably got authority in that. But um, as you were saying that your lecturer does not have um, authority in the area of your time management because they don't know anything about that. Um, so maybe your best friend knows more about that. So have a think about who's giving you feedback. And that applies just as much to yourself. Um, I certainly, I know if I am giving myself feedback, I'm likely to be quite critical of myself, as in negative about myself. 
Um, so I can acknowledge that. I can say, actually, this feedback's coming from me. Maybe I should. <laughs> and you're biased. <laughs> I'm biased. I'm biased to be to be um, negative about myself at times. Let's come. Let's compliment this with some feedback from Alex, who might be more positive. He might not. You never know. Um, depends on feeling. It depends. It depends what I've done. Um, but um, but I so have a think about who's giving you the feedback um, when you're considering that as well. Okay. So that is actually a really good point, and I'm glad you raised that, because I was just thinking of it solely in terms of academics giving you feedback, but if you get feedback on other things, so let's say you do a presentation and one, someone's very mean to you and it's like, you're rubbish, you know, who are they to say that? Are they someone you would trust, and would you take their advice on that point? If you wouldn't take their advice on something else, why are you taking the feedback? Uh, but for lecturers, you probably would take their advice, <laughs> given that they teach you. Um, so yeah. Feedback and uh, both given feedback at, um, and feedback that you give to yourself, they are both important things to make sure you reflect on quite regularly. But this is a very good time to start doing that before the new semester starts. Something else that is important to start considering before the new semester starts is goal setting. Uh, and Naomi, could you just overview why you think it's important for students to set themselves goals whilst at the university? I think it's important should we, should we use a metaphor? It's important to know where you're heading, where you want to be heading. It's important to know where you are heading and where you want to be heading. Um, and if those two don't line up, then you need to be starting to put, put some goals. Goals can give you focus to what you're doing. They can give you motivation. Um, they can bring structure to your development. So we're going to talk about develop at Derby in a bit. That's all about developing yourself, developing your skills. Having a goal can really help bring, like I say, focus and structure to that. Just saying, I am going to develop my skills. That's quite a big thing. And as you will see, we've got an awful lot of information in Develop at Derby about how you can do that. Um, you will not be able to sit down, start with guide one, page one, and work all the way through it. Um, you could do. I'm not saying don't. No, I am saying don't. Don't you do that. You might not get the maximum benefit from <laughs> yes. it. It's like we have a Success as a Student podcast, Twenty, uh, I think it's 16 hours of me talking. If you want to listen to all of that, great, but you won't get the maximum benefit unless you target and tailor each area yes. to you, your goals. You do interview other people. It's not 16 <laughs> hours of Alex just solidly talking. There's guests on each episode. It's 16 hours of very useful, informative content of Alex asking questions and people responding. Yes. But I you know, still might not want to listen to all 16 hours in one game. I wouldn't recommend it personally. I'd recommend tar targeting which one to best for you and align best with your goals and what you want to aim for. So, Naomi, continue. Sorry. Well, you. so I was just going to talk through some of the um, basics of good goal setting. Now, there is lots of different ideas about this. You will be able to find, if you put goal setting into your favourite search engine, I'm sure lots of things would come up. You can get books about it, all sorts. But these are four things that stuck out to me when I was thinking about it and that um, that I, I think are important. I'm not saying they're the only things that are important, but they're, they're four that I wanted to highlight. So firstly, your goal needs to be clear. You need to understand what your goal is. It might be useful to consider, would someone else understand what this goal is if um, if they came back to it? Because I don't know about you, Alex, but often I will write something down on one day and come back to it a week later and be like, ooh, I wonder what I meant there. That's interesting. Um, so a good test at the time is if I showed this to someone else, would they know what it meant? Because in a week's time, I might be that someone else trying to work out what it means. So is, is it clear? Do I understand the goal? Is it realistic? So my goal might be to listen to all 16 hours of Alex's um, podcast um, in one go. Is that realistic? Will I need to sleep in that time? Will I need to do something else before I, <laughs> before I lose the plot during even, that 16 hours? Can you even concentrate for that full time and actually absorb it? Because no. it's like reading for a full day. It's not, it's not effective unless you start switching methods of learning. So... Yeah. So are you, are you setting the bar too high for yourself? You could also ask yourself if, you set, if you're setting the bar too low, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. That's also something to consider under is it realistic? Is it too realistic? Um, is it useful? So you could have a goal that's, that's realistic, that's very clear, um, but actually it's of no use. Yeah. So it could be I could set myself a goal to catch 10 fish from the pond at Mark Eaton Park tomorrow. Um, that's... That's fairly clear. It's not realistic because I've never fished in my life. Plus, I'm a vegetarian and I really don't like 
But that kind of thing. But also, it's not useful. That's not going to help me in any way, shape, or form. Particularly if your goals is, like, say, to get, I don't know, first class degree. How is fishing going to help with that? Unless you were writing an assignment about fish and you were needing to do research to understand it, or if that fishing was to help clear your head to then focus on things. Because you can do a lot of thinking. Fishing is not going to clear my head. Well, yeah. Um, But that's a question to ask. Is this actually useful? And then I suppose we're talking about different um, different hierarchy hierarchy of goals. So Alex mentioned getting um, a, a good grade in your degree that's broken down into getting good grades in your different assignments um so does this does this particular goal fit in with my overall goals your your overall goal might be to do with your career in the future there's all sorts make sure it's all sort of again if we don't want goals branching off on different paths my Mm -hmm. not both my hands are goals (laughs) branching off in different paths and they've all got to be on the one path and they don't all have to be but it helps if all the horses are pulling in the same direction on yeah. the path that's not split up. I call it alignment, personally. <laughs> Try to align your goals together and see if you can do things that will help multiple of your goals at once. Oh my, I hadn't even thought Impossible. about that. that. That feels like a step beyond trying to hit multiple goals at once. Um, and then the last point, that, like, moving swiftly on, the last point that I wanted to highlight is you need to have some way at the beginning when you're setting your goal, think about how you're going to review it. So there's, um, if you set a goal, and then don't think about how you're going to review it, then that goal might well get lost in the ether. Mm. So think about when you're going to review it, so at what time are you going to stop and review it. And that could be multiple points um, throughout um, your your week, your year, your life, whatever. Um, but also how are you going to review it? So you can ask yourself, how will I know if I've met this goal? What does success look like? What does partial success look like? What criteria am I going to use to see if I've met this goal or not? So that's um, an important thing to think about right at the beginning um, before you before you crack on. But it's also something you can use to empower yourself to reflect and go, okay, this is what my outcomes are going to be. Where am I currently towards those outcomes? Yes. And then that allows you to mix and integrate reflection, which is something you do need to do on your goals, in, into your... Yeah, they're goals. very, very linked topics, which is why we're talking about them in the one yes. live stream. Um, a reflection will, when you get to the future focus stage, that might very naturally lead into specific um, formal goals. It might not, but it might do. Then when you're reviewing a goal, either at the end of the process or partway through, then reflection is going to come into that. And we do have a reflective action plan. Um, on the develop at Derby guys, which we will look at shortly. We've okay. we've, we've we've dangled been... the idea of develop at Derby so many times now, Alex. Do you think we should move on and actually show um, it? Shall we show it in a couple of minutes? I've got a few things I want oh, to no, say. Oh no, oh see, I'm add to your to. Goal set. I try and do a nice smooth move from one topic to another, and Alex is like, no, we're not done yet. The four minutes in advance, Mary. Honestly. So I just wanted to pull out a few things that you said there and highlight them uh, from what you said there. And I think one of the most important things with goal setting is clear. You started off with the example of skills and I want to improve my, improve my skills. What does that mean? Which skills? And then when you start breaking it down into things like that, you go, okay, which skills? Okay, um, let's go for how I reference. I got marked down in the past. I want to get better at that. Okay, referencing. How do I get better at referencing? Okay, what am I going to do? What my action is going to be? And then you can start breaking it down and down and down. And I think that's really useful because otherwise your goal just becomes this physical block if you don't break it down. Yes, you don't want to make a goal so big yeah. that you think, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. And turn away from it. And so if you start breaking things down, it becomes smaller steps. You're not having to jump up Mount Everest. You're just slowly walking step by step by step. And if you think about Mount Everest, it's probably a bad example, but you're not walking Everyone's up Everest. Everyone's going to try and jump up Mount Everest. Yeah, but you can do it. But you can walk slowly and slowly and slowly. So if you aim for something as high as that, Mount Everest, in your, your eyes, you can only achieve it by making slow and small progress uh, towards those goals. So do... Yeah. That makes me want... This is terrible. But I, I in my defence, I have um, small daughters. It's like in Frozen 2. When they say you just, if the, the whole, you don't know what to do next, the whole thing's too big, you do the next right thing. There's a song, which I'm not going to sing. I get copyright stuck with that. Um, so, yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to add as well, um, and it also relates to a little bit to the mountain example, is that you discussed about realistic goals um, and how your goals shouldn't be too low. Uh, so something we discuss in the Motivation and Mindset Workshop is about a mindset called Aim for the Stars which essentially is about having lofty goals higher than you believe you can achieve because then when you start getting because then when you start getting feedback you may actually start doing better than you believed you could. So when goal setting do consider what whilst your goals should be realistic 
and they should be something you could achieve, do still aim high because if even if you don't get that high that high bar, you will still do might do better than you would have done beforehand. Ambitious does not mean unrealistic. Yeah. So a goal can be ambitious and incredibly achievable. Yeah, so I would aim for ambitious goals because that way you'll help to motivate yourself to do well. But we just discuss that a lot more in our motivation and mindset workshops. So I don't want to duplicate content. Um, okay, so... Um, Can we show we... Develop at Derby now, please? Are we ready to show Develop at Derby? I would like to show Develop at Derby now, please. Is this where we do a, a very clever camera change? So, something that you may have figured out... Not quite yet, sorry, Naomi. I'm not yet. I was waiting for it. So, something that you may have uh, found in your, um, in your time... Sorry, in your reflections, is the fact that when reflecting, there are some clear areas that you want to improve. So the key thing that I would recommend doing then is targeting how you could improve them. And one method of that is develop at Derby. So develop at Derby, uh, for those of you who are uninitiated, is basically a hub of content that unifies skills, uh, careers, digital, um, digital solutions and services, or IT, and also, what's the other one? Well-being. Well-being, uh, well-being skills, all in one place. All the aim of helping you to improve your skills, whatever areas you want to improve. So, a common example of something that students want to improve are skills in critical thinking. So, imagine you've... I'm, what? I'm waiting for the camera change, sorry. It's going to change very soon, now. Sorry. don't worry about it. So, imagine yourself, you've received feedback from your lecturer, and that feedback has said you need to improve your critical thinking. You've thought about... You thought about your process that yourself and you realise that you never even aimed to be critical in your writing. So now you want to start exploring what it is. Um, so the first place I'd recommend going is to our develop Adobe pages uh, and trying to find which pages align to that. So let's transition now to the library homepage uh, and we can uh, see what we'll do. So this here is the library homepage, um, which you can access through a variety of ways. Uh, one way you can access it is through uh, Udo, through the um, the library tab, where's library gone here? Through clicking on hit this library tab here, you can also access Developer Derby as well itself through the Developer Derby tab here. Although this may change if you're watching this back in a few years' time, uh, so be aware it may look a little bit different. Uh, what probably won't change is the way of finding it through Google uh, via just simply searching for uh, University of Derby Library. Alternatively, you can go to University of Derby's website and you can just scroll all the way to the bottom to access our library web pages. So, uh, by scrolling all the way to the bottom, clicking on this library button here, you can get to our library pages that way. So, there are many ways to find the library pages. Once there, uh, I would recommend going to our Develop at Derby pages here, which are currently in this drop down menu. So, click on this drop down menu, Derby Hub will take you to a very beautiful looking page. With it's little gorgeous. icons. I'll show it. I've got to show it now. Uh, otherwise, if you want to take a shortcut, you can click on any of these quick links. But I'll show you Developer Derby Hub uh, when it loads, which it currently is not. So, whilst I'm just waiting for it to load, which it did break slightly in the test, but then it fixed itself, and there we go. Um, so, whilst we're just waiting for it to load, um, Developer Derby, like I say, is this one stop shop for different skills that you may want to develop. And there are nine different categories of skill. So there's preparing for study, critical thinking, um, types of assessment. Um, types of assessment covers different assessment types that you may get, such as uh, reflective assignments, uh, literature reviews, dissertations, projects and reports, and things like that, and gives our guidance for those, as well as also linking to skills for studies guidance for that as well. Um, we also have preparing for study, which is really good for any new students at the university. That covers topics like independent learning, mindsets, Understanding university phrases, as Naomi discussed earlier, which is very important to do. Um, we then have critical thinking, which we'll go through in a second. Referencing, which is quite obvious. Uh, writing, which helps you with your writing skills. And then pages from different areas of the university, such as how to upgrade digital skills, how to make sure you're in the right mindset uh, for studying through well-being, math support, and a, a page about looking at the career, looking forward towards your careers already, which links very heavily with goal setting. But for now, we're going to have a look at critical thinking. Critical thinking is a skill that students often struggle with and often get feedback on. The truth is, as we discuss in many of our workshops, it's not actually that difficult once you start knowing how, but often people build this wall that it's a very difficult skill to do. Just like reflection, it's something you probably do naturally. 
So let's have a look at our critical thinking pages and let's have a look at what we have here. So in our critical thinking, you'll see there are a number of different sub pages. A page about how to read at university with some guidance on critical analysis of what you read. A page about how to search for resources. A page on how to evaluate the sources of information that you read. And some self-assessment tools here. You may also see that there's a link here to relevant workshops. On all of our guides, we have links which when you click on them, they open up a, um, a link to our calendar of upcoming workshops. But they only show the workshops relevant to that topic. So here you can see all of our workshops that cover critical thinking. So if this was one of your goals, maybe re maybe register for a few of these. Oh look, here's some academic writing workshops. Here's one about how to evaluate sources. And so on. So do have a look through the topics that are relevant and consider signing up for them. And then, uh, and then watching them uh, live and interacting or getting a recording afterwards if you can't attend them at the time and date. So let's go off the workshop calendar for a second and let's go back to the guide. So on each of these guides, there are many pages of information that you may want to read. Consider which ones are relevant to you and relevant to the, the ways you want to develop. You, like we were discussing earlier, you don't necessarily need to read all of them. Focus on the bits that are most important to you and the ones that you want, the areas you want to look at. So maybe you want to learn how to evaluate sources of information and how to read more critically. So maybe open these two, like I've just done there. So let's go to reading at university first. You'll see there are many pages of advice here, such as reading strategies, um, videos on reading, and so on. And if you click on these different pages, you'll see that you can read this different advice and have a look at it. You'll also see there's advice on how to be critical here, so maybe have a look at that too. You'll also see links to relevant modules in something called Bloomsbury Skills of Study. Bloomsbury Skills of Study is an amazing tool that essentially is a more interactive version of our guides. They're, they're full of interactive activities that you can have a look at uh, for additional learning. Uh, you do have to, when you register for the first time, we've got advice for how to do it. Um, and all you need to do is use your, uh, use your university email address and then sign in uh, and follow these steps that are on screen at the moment. Um, once you've logged in, then from then on, you can just access it and access the module on critical thinking skills for some more interactive learning. Uh, we also have playlists of videos uh, and audio playlists for the topic. And then once you, and, and once you're done with these pages, you may find some critical thinking worksheets and examples, as well as also some examples of further reading that you may be interested in. We need to show the reflect and the reflection guide. We do. We'll show that in a second. So another thing that another example of a guide that we can showcase to you then, as long as the critical thinking ones that kind of they all follow a very similar structure, uh, information, things like how to do lateral reading, uh, interactive modules videos, audio, downloadable resources, and so on. Um, other, uh, something else you may be interested in is pages on reflection, because Naomi was mentioning them earlier. So if you're thinking about, I want to improve my skills, maybe you want to start with reflection, because that way you can improve your other skills through knowing how to reflect. So I've gone back to the library homepage, just to showcase this again, just in case anyone missed it. Library homepage, develop at Derby, scroll down, and reflection may be in a few different places. For, uh, the main place is types of assessment, but you can also find it in preparing for study because it's relevant to both sections. So if I go to types of assessment, I then see a list, and reflection is here because people have to study reflective assignments as well. So you click on that, and then you'll see our different pages on this. Lots of pages of information to read through, such as how to reflect on feedback, skills, experiences, all what we've been talking about today. Uh, a guide for reflecting on your career, information on reflective tools such as PowerPad, and then some uh, downloadable resources. So what exactly was it that we were showing today, ne then Naomi? So we mentioned the... Do you want to oh, come Should I come into the shot? Yes, I, come I shot. I wheeled myself out of the shot because I'm very confused by the different cameras going on. Um, but <laughs> but I'm right. very pleased that the pot plant is in shot on this ah, camera. Amazing. Um, so we talked about the reflective 
um, action plan several times. That's here. It's downloadable. It's a word format, so you can take it. You can fill it out. Um, if you're having difficulty with thinking of questions to ask yourself for those different stages, we've got sheets here um, on all three of those stages. They all appear twice, once in PDF format, once in Word format. It's the same document. It's there literally whichever format makes most sense for you to use, whichever mm -hmm. one's um, most accessible for you, then crack on and use that one. We've also got um, a personal reflection worksheet that will take you through um, that more structured um, reflection and an activity, which is a fun little activity where you get to draw a boat. It's a good activity and, and you can reflect on that boat, uh, which we do actually run in the reflection workshop as well and it works a treat, so good thinking there, Naomi. I also did want to just mention more the reflecting on your future page. If I click on that, um, this is another page about reflection that's been developed by the um, Careers and Employment Service. So if you want to do reflection specifically with regards to your future career, um, then check that one out. Yeah, very good. And it does align very well with goal setting too. So do have a look at these at these pages. Yes, I'm going to disappear Wheel from the shot away. again. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to reappear in shot. Yeah, I'm in shot. Cool. Um, oh, I'm still here. Oh, no, you know, that's past you. Oh, that's past me, sorry. That's past Naomi. Um, okay. So those were a few different guides that you can use uh, to help you with your learning, but there are a few different other things I want to focus on as well. Um, in the workshop calendar, if instead, of, if instead of going into the guides, if you wanted to find workshops that were relevant to your goals, you can click on the workshop calendar and simply go to here where it has filter by and then pick all the topics that you're interested in. This never needed to really be, um, you've never really needed to do that, did you, Alex? But we've got so many workshops yes. on now that filtering down is a very good idea. So go to the library homepage, click on the workshops button, scroll down to the filter by, and then pick and choose uh, which different workshops you're interested in. So communication skills, maybe you want to learn, learn about group work, because you've got group work assessment, how to study independently, because you're new to university, note taking, because it's really important, and so on. And then what that will then do, it will give you this little nice custom calendar and you can see all the workshops coming up on those topics, and then you can register for them. You could bookmark it, couldn't you? So you if you could. bookmark that web link, it would remember all your categories. Like I've done up here, with all 14 of my categories that I teach in. Um, so yeah, exactly, you can bookmark it and then save it, which is really useful to do. Um, I'd also recommend potentially book bookmarking developer Derby as well. Um, we did have a question that came in earlier, so um, I'm happy to answer that, Kingsley. So sorry about the delay in answering it. Uh, I couldn't answer by chat because it would make so much noise. Uh, so Kingsley asked earlier, how do you know which database focuses of our workshops are for you? Um, and the key way to do that is going to our databases hub here um, and searching by subject. So if you go to the library website, that we do database focuses, which are run by the academic librarians, which basically give a deep dive in how to use a different database. To know which ones are relevant to you, go to the library homepage, click on the databases button here, and then filter by your subject, and you can see the subject areas that come up. So let's say, for example, you're a psychology student. Uh, you click on that, it will give you the 21 databases that are registered as being psychology databases, as well as information about your librarian, Jill. Um, so then you can have a look through these and you can see which ones are recommended. And then and then you can then say, okay, I'll look for database focuses on these areas. So for example, we had one on I think Psych Info earlier in the week uh, that, uh, that we ran. So that is one way of doing it, is by going to the databases tab, uh, databases part of the library homepage, and then searching by your subject. The other way is through your subject guides. So go to the library homepage, you can either click on support or go to subject guides here on the right hand side uh, click on subject guides on the right hand side find your subject area so let's say again let's say you were in nursing this time let's click nursing then let's go to nursing and midwifery because that's your course area or library resources for uh, HPSC then when you come to here it says key subject resources for your subject so let's say you're a nursing student they, and you can then look through and I'll say, here are, the core, so here are the core ones that are of interest to you. So that's how you would know Kingsley. Um, hello. So d does anyone have any other questions that they would like answering? Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to showcase today. I'm coming back into shot. I think we should switch back. We are switching back. <laughs> so <laughs> the camera. Does anybody have any other questions for us that they would like us to, uh, us to answer now? Uh, 
If not, then no worries. It's been really lovely having you all here. Thank you ever so much, everyone, for, for watching. And if you're watching us on video, then the f future me is also <laughs> appreciative of you joining us. Um, it's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. How have you found it, Alex? I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was a different format and it enabled different type of content, such as more discussion content between the two of us yeah. than a workshop would do. Um, there's less interactivity, but then that work our workshops are very interactive. So this is more different format for us to, to delve into especially because we can then do topics that are very relevant but not worthy of the workshop on their own, but they're relevant and timely for when the live streams go out. And it's good fun. I it enjoyed is. it. I hope it comes across that we're enjoying doing it because hopefully that makes it more enjoyable. Not that we don't enjoy our workshops. We enjoy those too. But it is a more informal I had, format. I had a laughing fit in note-taking earlier, as you probably would know Kingsley. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, so just to summarise the live stream, um, Naomi, would you like to be the summer up since I introduced or would you like me to sum up? Well, I um, see now you've taken me by surprise. Because I, can I was do it, not expect. No, 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 no. I can do it. I can work under pressure. I can. And um, in summary, in this live stream, we have discussed reflection. We've talked about how you might do that in everyday situations. We've talked about how you might bring some more structure in it, and we've looked at some of the resources that we've got available to help you do that. And we've thought about how you might think about feedback from from your lecturer, from your peers, from yourself, and how you might apply that. We've thought about your goals. What is makes a good goal and um, how how do you approach goal setting and how do goal setting and reflection merge together um and then finally we've showcased the developer derby resources so there's one can i just ask you this question i know i'll put you on the spot but if there's one takeaway point that you would want people to go away with after watching this live stream what would it be develop at derby develop at derby exists 100 percent Develop at derby it's very good uh, I would have to say, remember to reflect and use those models to make reflection that would usually be descriptive to something more action-focused, as you were discussing earlier, Naomi. I think it's a very good point. Anyways, that's all for today. Uh, thank you all for engaging, and thank you all for listening to us. Hopefully, we've helped somewhat. Uh, I'm going to uh, start to end the stream now, uh, and the formal stream has ended. Uh, but yeah, thank you all very much um, for coming along today. Uh, any other closing words, Naomi? No, I think that's it. I think okay. we should quit whilst we're ahead. Good. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.